Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining on me today on what may be the fastest video we've ever done, right? Whoa, you say, Tony, that's, uh, what does that mean? It's gonna be a short video, you're gonna talk super fast. No, we potentially, potentially could go 200 miles an hour plus in this car right here. Maybe not, but however, it is built for that kind of speed. We're gonna spend some time looking at this and I'm gonna apologize up front. Normally I don't read off of these things here. I know most of the, everything about the cars, but in this case here, there is so much put into this car, almost $250,000 spent on it and six test miles, six test miles, right? When we look at some of the detail and the effort put into this, you're gonna to say to yourself, wow, I had no idea that a NASCAR looked like this underneath, inside, and whatever. This car is actually mid-engine. You're told, mid-engine? The engine's back there? No, no. I'm gonna show you what that means as well. I'm gonna show you the finest, some of the, some of the finest, because there's a lot of competition out there, but maybe the finest black paint, tuxedo black paint, you've ever seen. All right, so we talk about paint and things like that. Here's what I wanna share with you. Painting, you and I could probably paint a car. You say, Tony, I've never painted a car. How could I possibly do that? Well, it involves a little bit of this. However, painting a car is not wrapped up in the paint. Yes, it's a big process, and I'm not taking anything away from the painter. However, great paint is tied up in the prep of the car. And you say, well, Tom, what does that actually mean, the prep of the car? Well, here's what you'll know. If you were at home and you fixed a nail hole and you put your filler in and you sand it and then you paint it and you can still kind of see the, the nail hole, that means that your prep that you did wasn't so good, right? The same thing happens on these long panels. If they're not straight and flat, a black car will show you everything immediately, right? White cars kind of hide that stuff, black cars show everything. In this case here, these panels, most of them are new. Secondly, they are uh, done so well and such incredible preparation that the paint is so flat, so shiny, and so beautiful, you can see everything from the ceilings to the reflections of everything around us in this paint. And when I do our, our paint test, you'll be able to read every letter nice and crisp. Why is that important? Because the crisper the letter, the better the paint is, right? Orange peely paint gives you orange peely looking letters. Crisp, shiny, deep coated paint gives you nice crisp letters. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Check that out right there, you can see. So nice, crisp, every detail, beautiful. All right, so when you're building a NASCAR, you got three parts of the business to do, right? Because now you're a businessman. You have the exterior of the car that needs to cut through the wind, right? You gotta work on all of that to make sure it flows as best as possible using the least amount of horsepower. The interior of the car, right? Gutted to make it as light as possible and comfortable for the driver uh, with all the ancillary pieces inside to help him know what's happening, him or her, right? And then you have the business of this here. This is a monster motor. It's a Boss 429, hand assembled, hand built, 681 horsepower on pump gas dynode, right? 681 pump gas, right? Can you get more out of it? Yes, but just as it sits right now, 681 horsepower. The one amazing piece about this car is this, is that it was designed not only to go on a track, but also to go for a cruising and things like that. So what does it have that may be a NASCAR? This has air conditioning, believe it or not. This has modern heat and air. So you could enjoy this car, right? The sound of it is ridiculous, ridiculous, right? And when you pull into a car show in this vehicle here, right? Everybody already knows it's not a normal car. Secondly, it is the chassis for Dale Jarrett's car is in here and it's welded onto the frame right there, the chassis number, so you know what you're getting, right? This is a real deal NASCAR chassis set up. The brakes are this wide, right? The rotors are this big. You have to have bigger wheels on the car just to fit the brakes inside there. They're enormous, okay? Lastly, this is a mid-engine car. NASCARs are mid-engine. You say, well, Tony, how can you have a mid-engine car? The, car? the engine's up front, it's not in the back. It doesn't have to be in the back to be mid-engine. What it has to be is if the center line of the front wheel is right here, as long as the engine is behind that, and that's what we've done here because the NASCAR chassis allows them to fabricate and do that, right? It gets all the weight off the front end so the car handles much better. And that's exactly what we have here. Not to mention a giant radiator, electric fans, uh, all of the things that you would need uh, to make sure that it ran cool and enjoy. Has the screens in front to keep bugs out. 
uh, these right here for, uh, for fresh air. And then lastly, we have ram air here. Ram air here uh, through the cowl, and the cowl is scooped in the back, custom molded in the back, so the cold air gets inside that air cleaner, and it doesn't take the hot air from uh, where all this work is going on. So far, I rambled a lot, but you can see clearly, this is amazing. All right, so we have some serious hardware built into this, right? I want to spend a minute so you can see the effort that's gone into it. For instance, we have here, obviously welded in here uh, for the fitment of the fuel uh, can, right? Dump the fuel in, in you go, right? Nice and safe. This right here is actually a fuel vent, okay, built into the car, riveted on. So you say, well, why would they rivet on these types of things? The spoiler itself, riveted all the way at the top and the bottom. Why? Because at 200 miles an hour, things fly off the car, right? We don't want that to happen. This right here, there's a lot of air coming inside this car. A lot of air, so much air that potentially this could have popped out of the car because of the turbulence inside. These straps do a good job of holding that back down, all right? Once we get inside here, we have the tail lights. We're all, here's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to make the car as smooth as possible going through the wind, right? This trunk lid right here easily could pop open as well uh, from a regular just trunk latch. The trunk latch isn't designed to be holding the trunk on at 200 miles an hour, so they pin it, right? I took those off just so you could see it. But check this out. The trunk is as nice as any Bentley trunk that you'll ever look at. The fuel cell is here, dual fuel, fuel feeds, right? The frame and chassis welded all the way through the back here. The battery held down in a billet mode. Dual cables holding it all together, right? Exactly the way it's supposed to be. Set up nicely, beautifully restored, and you can still see, you can still see it's so much nicer than an original NASCAR because this was designed to be a show car as well and to be able to take this place is go to a show. When you pull up in this car, I keep saying it because once you hear it outside, you're like, oh my God, I, now I get it, right? When you hear this car, that boss motor coming out the sides in this car is amazing, and I can't wait to show it to you. All right, so so much of this car is underneath of it as well, right? We talked about the business of everything in here, but there's so much underneath that you can't really see while we're walking around. For instance, welded onto the drive shaft is uh, the pulley to drive the pump to cool the rear of the car, right? And everything is done with braided lines, AN fittings. This has a rear end cooler, not like a fan that we would normally see, but an actual radiator style cooler on here to keep the rear end cool, right? During these high speeds. <laughs> Every piece is engineered to be heavy duty. It's very much like building an airplane, right? There's a lot of redundant uh, backup features here to keep this car operating for two, three, four, five hundred 500 miles at full throttle. It is an amazing environment for these to be in, and this is a great representation of those details. All right, so come join me inside here because this is the business department inside. How are we doing? All right. All right, so come on in here and let's see how we get this done. It's a quick release wheel. Makes it easy to get in and out. Okay, that's on. And now we are in the business department. The business department. Every place has a business department, whether it's a building or a car. This is where business is done, all right? Whew. There is so much done in here and detail-wise, uh, that's amazing. First off, you can take somebody with you. Second, you can see that the chassis right? The chassis is welded all around the whole car and then the car is actually hung on top of the chassis, right? The, 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 the chassis doesn't really need the body of the car other than to make for aerodynamics because everything is so stiff and welded together. It's really amazing. Air conditioning controls there. If you decide you want to use the air conditioning, your shift light right here, power cutoff switch, full array of gauges in your face, right? So you can see things. The only thing that you may consider changing is this says 160 mile an hour speedometer and if this car goes significantly faster than that, you might want to think about that. However, 160 is probably pretty fast, and you might want to experiment with that first. This has the, uh, the rear cooler over here, uh, ignition, uh, transmission cooler, fans, and then you got a start button right here. These are actually power windows, right? These are power windows for this car, which is kind of cool. So the track day, you could take this car, uh, enjoy it, and drive it on home, which is uh, super amazing. Uh, full uh, sets of, of the seat belts. You got uh, shoulder and lap. And you're in a cockpit, man. This is it. You're doing your business. You're driving. And uh, you got the big mirror right here. There's so many little things that you can't really see. I don't know if in the video or not, but so many little touches that you can't really see. The fasteners being stainless steel. 
uh, the VIN number welded to the top of the tag, so you, to the top of the dash, so you can make sure you know uh, you're in compliance. Clips to hold the windshield in place because of the turbulence that's inside the car, right? Trying to keep the the driver cool during those uh, high speed races. And beautiful tin work done in the back. It's just uh, such a well put together car. I could ramble on for days about this. I don't want to bore you, but uh, once you get it and you drive it, you'll know exactly why I'm smiling. All right, so we're going to close up the video, but I want to read a couple small things to you just so you know what you're getting, right? You're not getting just a 69 Torino with a motor in it, right? You're getting a full NASCAR chassis under here, right? Uh, from uh, Dale Jarrett's car. Uh, the hood from Holman and Moody car uh, number 17, okay? The, the fenders, rear panels, and bumpers are from various cars driven by Richard Petty during the same amount of time. These are expensive, expensive pieces, right? This is a vintage race car now. Did you hear that? You can go vintage racing in this car. You probably never even thought about that, right? Can you imagine a Saturday or Sunday in this car going around your local track, uh, a road course or oval or circle, whatever it may be, in this car and the sound that it makes, helmet on, shifting through the gears, working it around the corners. I mean, it is an experience that is, uh, most people pay uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to enjoy, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to enjoy. These cost millions and millions of dollars to build uh, today. So you can imagine what this will be worth even more years down the road. It is a cool, cool piece of history. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this uh, 69 Torino Talladega, all right? And uh, if you would, please share the videos with your friends. I hope they like them. Uh, you can hit the like button down below. And if you subscribe to the channel, we got new stuff coming out every single day. And then I will see you on the test drive.